M. Adrian Johnson production. Welcome, Thank Serge, you. Uh, sous le plateau, uh, founder and uh, president of uh, Almatropie. Mm -hmm. uh, very welcome to uh, Lunch at Circle. Thank uh, you for the invitation. You, we have invited you here to speak about innovation. So. Yes. Um, and we wanted to ask you a few questions before we start. Mm -hmm. So, first question, which was the headline on the invitation, is can you actually promote innovation or is it something that just happens? No, innovation is something very mysterious. It's more like an alchemy uh, rather than, you know, like there is a new business and then you have to, to deploy a lot of uh, strategies and things like that. Innovation is something like a melting pot between on one side companies, and it is fascinating to, to, to analyze the fact that the deeper the companies are in trouble, the most innov innovative they are. Uh, rich companies, you know, it's very difficult to be innovative because everything is okay. And on the other side, people who have, you know, the courage to some sort of entrepreneurship, you know, mentality, which means that they see ruptures, they see uh, problems arising, and they see some sort of I don't think solution is the right term, but a pass to some new, uh, uh, new world where you know, uh, actually the business is better or whatever happens. So it, it's more an alchemy. You know, you cannot. A lot of people have tried, you know, to promote innovation. You know, we shall be innovative. It, it, it's not enough. It happens. What what to, what would you then say to a CEO or to a, to an innovation manager in an enterprise? What. Would your recommendation be to make his organization innovative? No. Uh, well, this comes back to where my heart is right now. I, I would first tell him, go and see what happens on the Internet. Because the way Internet has been built is probably uh, the way that now the world is moving. You know, Internet, there is no chief. You know, there is no technic uh, chief uh, executive officer, no chief technology officer. Yeah. People who did the internet, you know, they were not paid for that. And mm -hmm. for me, internet is something that really is the world of tomorrow. So the first thing to learn is look what is happening right now, and then see how this can apply inside your company, which is not an easy business. Mm. And your business uh, today, which is Almatropi or your foundation, uh, mm -hmm. is very much about innovation on, uh, and how you can use the internet effectively for that. But going a while back, a couple of years back, uh, you founded your own company, mm -hmm. uh, Hydeal. Um, why did you uh, do that? Why did you become an entrepreneur? <laughs> well, we had an idea. We, we were, you know, uh, two, two, two main partners, uh, my main partner and who were heading a team in uh, the R&D of France Telecom in Caen. Mm. Well, we were in a very, very interesting position. We had a vision of the new economy of the world. He was building the software. I was funding, you know, financing, internally financing France Telecom, the, the software. And we were talking to some innovative customers who were telling us, yes, you're right. Your position, the, the, your, your vision is right, the software you're building is right. Mm. And France Telecom was not understanding that. Mm. So we came to the, you know, some sort of either we just put everything in the dustbin or we create a company out of that. And we went to California and in California, you know, it's, there's a vibration there. Mm. And everybody says, yes, your ideas are great. So mm. just go on. So, you know, in, instead of putting everything in the dustbin, we, we told from Silicon, well, why not create a startup out of that? Mm. So this is, you know, it, it was not meant at the, at the beginning. It was just because our management did not understand the value of what we were creating. Mm. Mm. But it, it was something that was uh, very much a question of creating something out of innovation. And now uh, what you actually do with, work uh, with today is helping people to innovate and talk about innovation. Now, what you do today, is that uh, uh, based on what you did at High Deal? So did you apply what you say today at High Deal, at what you did oh. at High Deal? Or is what you do today the results of learning from your mistakes at High Deal? <laughs> well, I guess you're right. I've learned a lot of the mistakes which I did at High Deal. You know, if you go back to the main subject, which is innovation, you cannot behave the same in a company which starts with seven employees 
and in a company which has 150,000 employees. Uh, we, we did a lot of things that were, so to speak, innovative. As an example, you know, when we founded Ideal, the first thing I said is, we shall go to California, we shall open a subsidiary. So I did open this subsidiary. Mm. Every management book would tell you not to do that. Mm. And, and my vision was that, okay, everything is happening in California in terms of the internet world, because one of our, one of our main market was internet, the other was telecommunication uh, operators. And so telecommunication operators was more European, but internet was more in the uh, in United States. Mm. So this is one thing, you know, we, we did a lot of things that all the book tell you not to do, you know, we hired a human resources manager when we were 20 employees only. Yeah. So she was doing HR and legal, but uh, I yeah. told my friend, you know, at that time, it was back in 1999, uh, we gave stock options to every employee in the yeah. company, including the, uh, you know, the lady who was welcoming the people. So, uh, I mean, nobody was rarely doing that at that time, you know. So I guess maybe we had some bright idea. But I made a lot of mistakes uh, too. And what I see, of course, the mistake you do are most learning. You know, learn a lot from the mistake more than the, the, the good thing we, mm. we did. So, you know, I, I didn't consider really the U.S. market as I should have done, you know. And I came, but anyhow, it was a long time ago. It worked fairly well anyway. Oh, Ideal is where he's doing very well right now, you know, 9 million euros uh, of uh, revenue. So it's, a, it's very good. It went through the bubble, yeah. you know. I've known the internet bubble explosion. I was there. I was in California. So. Um, another subject on combining internet and innovation. Uh, you spend a lot of time looking at what's happening on the internet and mm. what's happening in innovation. What do you think is the most interesting innovation from both a, a technology and from a business perspective today and looking forward on the internet? Well, the most recent one for me is Second Life. Mm. Because Second Life, there are many people who are, you know, going on Second Life. People, a lot of people are puzzled and people are considering Second Life as a game. Second Life is not a game, it's a shopping center. Mm. Because uh, you may have heard about the uh, mall in Edmonton. In, uh, in Canada. It is considered as the most innovative shopping center in the world. Mm -hmm. It's 500,000 square meters. It's 800 shops, mm -hmm. but it's Disney World. There are swimming pools, there are dolphins, there are hotels, there are restaurants. And basically it's the idea that shopping now goes through some sort of hedonistic experience. Mm. Well, if you apply that to the yeah. internet, the, the web browser right now is a very, very ugly way of shopping. But if you go to Second Life, Second Life is a shopping center. And for me, it's the most brilliant innovation that was invented recently. Putting in something that looks like a game, actually a shopping experience. Yeah. Interesting. And it's also a place of creativity because the, what internet is really developing is personal creativity. So Serge. in Second Life, you can be creative. Serge, uh, thank you very much. Uh, Serge, thank you, Pierre. Uh, sur le plateau, uh, president of Alma Tropi. Finishing uh, this interview, oh. I just want to give uh, a little taste it's and cold. welcome you to lunch at Circle. Thank you very much, Pierre. And if you're interested in uh, listening to more of what Serge has to, to say, we will be recording the uh, lunch at Circle event and we will put it online on our blog so you can l listen to the whole podcast. Thank you very much. I'm Perry Carlson from Lunch at Circle. Thank you. And Adrian Johnson Reduction.